Hello friends and welcome to another video lesson from DBOS Talks. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and click the bell so that you can be notified of new uploads. In this video, we'll be learning uh, best practices on how to name your folder or your file in Windows, in Windows 10. We'll start with this one. If you want portability, don't use spaces. Okay, although we know that Windows and even other OSs like Unix or Linux, but if we'll be focusing on Windows, it do it does support having space or spaces in the file name of a folder. I mean, the file name of a, a name of a folder or name of a file, and yet having the spaces can uh, cause conveniences or special issues in terms of import and in terms of portability of the file. Okay, I'll give you an example. See here in this demo, um, in the location called C demo, the folder, there are some subfolders here that I have um, created. One of them is called folder with space, aptly called like that. Um, in fact, if you look at the folder name itself, it really has the spaces in between folder with space. There. There are spaces there. Now, if we go to DOS and look at the same thing, imagine you do not know. Um, you are trying to look for this folder, which you know is under C colon backslash demo. So in DOS, you will do a dir, directory listing command, dir to list this folder. Let's just say in this example, you will not appreciate it because there are only a few folders, but there are real life situations wherein there are so many folders under this demo example, this folder. There are so many of these, there could be hundreds of folders underneath and you're looking for one specific one. So you'll do a dear. Let's do that now, dear. Let's just say you don't know the limitation of DOS or Windows. So you will do this folder with space. And what does it give you? At the bottom, you will see file not found. All the way is also referring, this um, message may also refer to a folder because a folder is technically also a file. But it is saying file not found, even though you see it there. So this. There's a workaround for it, but it will be painful if you, every time you will have a need to access this folder, you will do this workaround. So the workaround is the use of double quotes. Space. No. Folder, no. Folder with space. Okay, let me clear that. Dear. See, now it's found. And it is found and it even lists that there's a file inside of it called file with space. But the point of all this is that there is that inconvenience when you give, when you have a folder or a file which has spaces in it. So to get around this and to avoid this kind of situation. What you would do is, is a best practice, as a best practice is to replace the space with an underscore. There will be instances wherein some would prefer a dash or a, a hyphen, if you want to call it that. But hands down, it's more convenient to use uh, an underscore because it gives readability to the file name or the folder name, okay? So that is the first tip, which is if you want portability, in fact, readability and portability in one, don't use spaces on a folder name or a file name. That is folder. If we look at the file, inside of it, there's another, there's a file called file with space, which has the same situation having spaces in the name itself. So if I do a, okay, now I do a listing now. I have this folder called folder with space. So if I, mm -hmm. 
edit copy if i just do a directory uh, listing then i see it but if i do this there find with space point text then it says the same thing file not found when i know for a fact that the file exists it's there but again this is caused by the presence of space or spaces in the file name so to avoid that you will do the same thing you will re um, replace the space with a character like a non-space character like underscore or dash hyphen then you can do this now it's there see so one is to avoid portability issues don't use spaces on a file name or on a folder name okay it's that simple second is use a descriptive name on a folder or on your file meaning folder name or file name what do i mean by that let's just say we go to this folder and you have this file called file underscore one it doesn't really give you any hint at all any kind of clue what this file is about maybe at the time you created this file if you were the creator of this file you knew what the file contained or contains but give yourself seven months down the road, a year or so, or even a day after creating it, and then you somebody else sees this file. That person will not know what this file is all about. So that's why it's a good practice to use a descriptive name as a file name or a folder name. Nothing, not the generic type of names like this subfolder, file underscore one. Okay, so maybe. As an example, I will rename this into something like this. We have two. Meeting minutes for December 2021. Then that really gives you an idea of what the file contains, right? It's a meeting, it contains meeting minutes from this date. Okay. Okay. So that is giving descriptive names. Next is the length of the file name or folder name. The name must not be too long or too short. You would say it's quite obvious to think about this point, but I'll give you real examples like this one. Um, already, if you look at this file over here, it fulfills the criteria of the first two tips we have mentioned, which is one is to avoid the use of space or spaces in your file name. It is already okay in terms of not using a space on the file name. And the second is wherein we mentioned that we should be using a descriptive file name. This is already descriptive enough, right? my weekly sales report for April 21. But the problem with this one is it's too long for its own good. And you might say it helps you because it, it gives you all the information that you need to know about this file. But yes, but there'll be instances when it will become troublesome just because your file has a very long file name, especially when you're typing it or things like that. So uh, you can come up with a much shorter, more compact file name, which is still gives you enough information of what the file is about okay so let's keep it sweet and short maybe instead of this my weekly sales report for april 2021 you have to i could say something like this weekly wkly sales rep rep is quite obvious it's report uh well yes you could argue that it could be a representative but it doesn't make sense to have a weekly sales representative, right? So it's a weekly sales rep report, APR 2021. So that's just, there are many ways to do this. I mean, name, rename this file, but this is just giving you an idea of how to shorten your a long file name. Okay, so that is 
The name must not be too long, neither should it be too short. If it's too short, then it becomes again too generic. Let's just say we'll call it sales rep, sales representative or sales report. And you don't know for what, if it's a sales report, you're not sure for what month or year that sales report is, okay? So that's length. Next is this. You can rename your folder or your file based on frequency of use. What do I mean by that? Over a period of time that you're working day in, day out, the trend usually is that the amount of data you're dealing with, the number of files you have will grow over a period of time. It'll just keep on growing and growing and growing. The amount of files, the amount of even emails. So your number of folders will grow, the number of files you have will grow. So there is always a constant need to keep on maintaining, doing a due diligence, um, I mean, housekeeping of your files and folders so that they are still organized. You are not, um, so to speak, looking for a needle, needle in a haystack. So you will have to come up with a system of organizing your files and folders. One of it is, one of those is this to rename folder and file based on frequency of use. What do I mean by that? Example, you have, let's just imagine you don't have just five folders. Or you have 50 or maybe 20 folders over here. Imagine that. And after a period of time, after months and months, you noticed that there is this folder called important tasks, which is actually something you keep on accessing on a daily basis. In fact, multiple times a day. So you figured out this is a very frequently used folder. I want to put it at the very top of this stack of folders. And yet we know for a fact that the default behavior in Windows and maybe in also in other operating systems is that when you sort the folder names alphabetically, it is sorted alphabetically, right? So. In this case, you can see E, F, I, P, S. And if you click again, it reverses the ordering from Z or Z all the way to A in ASCII order. ASCII meaning if there's a number in this, there's a special character in this, the file names will be sorted according to the ASCII ordering. Now our situation is that our requirement is that we found out or we realized that this folder called important tasks is something that we keep on accessing on a daily basis. So I want to put it on top and yet it doesn't go to the top. It will never because if we alphabetize it, it is staying in the middle because it begins with letter I. So what would I do is a little trick, just a little trick. You do an F2, edit that or rename and you put a special character like underscore. And then it goes to the top simply because in the ASCII ordering of characters, text characters, the underscore takes precedence even above, even before the letter A. So even if you have a folder here, which begins with the letter A, and I think even number, this a folder which begins with an underscore will come up on, on top. See, so that's how you do it. You have a frequently used folder, which doesn't necessarily begin with the letter A, but you want to put it on top. And this is the way to put it on top, okay? And on the other hand, you have another requirement. You, again, you have, imagine you have so many folders in this location, maybe 20, maybe 30. And you realize, you observe that this folder called Excel is something you, hardly even access in a month or so. It's a very seldom used folder, this folder called Excel. You wanna put it at the very bottom because there are other more important folders that you wanna look at on a daily basis or a weekly basis at least. So you wanna put this folder called Excel at the bottom of this stack of folders. What would you do? So you would do something similar to this one adding an underscore, but in this case, you want to put it at the bottom. So this is what you'll do, F2 to the name. Uh, and at the very front, you will put something like, I would do this, ZZ. 
and it goes to the bottom. Again, because it, uh, it is ordered according to the ASCII ordering, ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So it goes to the bottom. Why do I use ZZ? Just in case there's a folder here, which also begins with letter Z, like zone, whatever it is, then I am very sure that still this folder, which I renamed as ZZ or ZZ, will surely go to the bottom, okay? So that's your little trick right there on how to rename your folder or file if you wanna put it on top or at the bottom. And it is something, it is a good practice. And you know what? This is also something you can do as a temporary measure. Meaning, let's say for now, for these few months, this folder is a hot potato, it's a hot topic. So it's good to put it on top. Let's just say after three months, suddenly the folder, the files inside these folders and the tasks related to it have become less and less needed. Then if you want to treat this as a normal folder again, then you can just easily remove the underscore and it becomes a normal folder. Okay, so there you go. You learn some best practices, some tips on how um, we could optimize how we can name our folders and files in a way that will make our work easier on a daily basis, okay? Um, I hope something um, new has been learned from this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and I will see you in the next video.